in the pit lane here then we have five of the 675 LTs just being prepared for the next press drives. We'll go over a little bit of the information though, so what you need to know, 675 LT because it is 675 PS, 666 brake horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque, so those figures are up 25 PS, 22 newton meters respectively from the 650S versus the 650S Coupe, it is 100 kilos lighter. A lot of weight saving has gone into that. New components, new design, more use of carbon fiber, titanium and other lightweight materials. And this particular car we're looking at here is in one of the new colors, Napier Green. There are five hero color specifications for the car. Starting around the front, you can immediately see there's a new carbon fiber splitter. It's more aggressive, it sticks out further towards the front, and it has these end plates at the side. As standard on the LT, we have the satin carbon fiber finish. There is a new wheel design, 800 grams lighter even over the whole set than the McLaren P1 wheels. It's a new sort of 10 spoke, 5Y sort of spoke design. This is the super lightweight wheel, it's the option wheel on the car. And in this car, in the Hero spec, you also have the Napier Green matched caliper. It's based, of course, around the same 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, but again, that has been heavily reworked. 50% new components in the engine and a new design to it as well under the polycarbonate rear window. On the rear deck here, we've also got much more open space, more vents for airflow out of the car. We've got a new titanium exhaust system, a much larger rear wing, 50% larger than the 650S. That looks truly awesome in action as well. The rear bumper and diffuser has been totally reworked. More aerodynamic basis and design and shapes that you can see going on there with the bare carbon fiber look as well through the center. And just more open, airspace to pull out the air through the rear of the car all around that you can see. On the interior, similar to an extent but we've got bucket seats as standard. Obviously the race focus, lots of options for the club sport pack with a roll hoop, harnesses, but maintaining the very driver focus nature that started with the 12C and the Super Series through the 650S of course. Around the side, we've got a new lower side skirt with this extra vent here because the radiators have been slightly rotated inside and with this enlarged vent behind the door, coupled with that second vent, there is increased airflow and cooling capabilities, of course, in there. So continuing along, along the line, we've got the Delta Red, this colour here, with the other wheel design available for the car, which can be had in various different tones, silver, stealth, or the two-tone sort of diamond cut finish. Beyond the second Delta Red car, we have Chicane Grey, the third of the Hero specifications, finished with McLaren orange calipers. There is also Silica White and a McLaren orange car as well, but it was Chicane Grey that I suppose was the launch specification at Geneva earlier this year. 675 LT is limited to just 500 units and they are all sold out. Very shortly to head into production. Coupe form only. And from what we're hearing it's a pretty impressive car so I'm rather excited to get to drive it a little bit later on today. As you can see, a number of track orientated options, including the McLaren track telemetry pack with three cameras and data logging. We'll talk all about this as we go on. But needless to say, this is the ultimate incarnation of McLaren's Super Series model, the P11. Let's take a look around the interior and what's different from the 650S. So the first and most noticeable thing, of course, is the new bucket seats, carbon fiber backed bucket seat design, especially new for this car. Comes with the Alcantara and the embossed leather, sort of two-tone design. You can have those in different colors. 675 LT embossed logo up on the headrest. 
you can have that with the club sport pack with the roll hoops and the harnesses of course as well this car is just with the standard seat belts which is a very supportive and comfortable solution to the car for sort of mixed use this car is still a very usable design that's always mclaren's sort of aims with everything they're making a change over the previous car down here is that you're straight through to the carbon fiber tub and you have the carbon fiber finish on the central tunnel as well you have the optional floor mats the 675 lt floor mats but that's a difference and you can see the carbon fiber running all the way through up the central tunnel there towards the rear which is new for this vehicle on the central console you have satin carbon fiber now as standard for the lt rather than the glossy from before active dynamics panels changed so you still have the handling three settings normal sport track and the powertrain three settings but now you have a dedicated button here for the esc settings so the dynamic traction control which has meant that the aero button moved from here down to here and as a result we've lost the winter mode setting but if you're out in the winter you're probably not driving this car on the steering wheel again satin carbon fiber new shift paddles obviously connected with the same rocker system as before where you pull one and the other moves away but this time they're extended further up and down carbon fibre very nice feel to those everything's Alcantara but you can also have an Alcantara and leather package whereby this would be Alcantara this outer section would still be leather another change for this car the air conditioning controls it used to be here to save weight though they've been moved from these door panels into a control here on the iris system but i'll go through that in a little bit more detail further through as well but that's meant that a new tweeter speaker system has been able to be installed up here which brings the sound level of the car slightly higher oh amazing and that driving experience LT has a number of different wing modes. You can see the wing in the aero mode here where it's up to a certain degree. When you then brake, the wing axe actually flies almost vertically, completely obscuring your rear visibility but acting as a huge anchor down onto the rear wheels for braking. Equally, it has DRS, so when you accelerate hard and flat on the straight, the wing will sit back down. Flat. <laughs> does that too. <laughs> the burnout mode then, what you've just witnessed, putting the car into sport or track on the handling and turning ESC off, using the traction off button, it properly allows the car to light itself up and set down some perfect 11s in the rubber, from the rubber, sorry, on the tarmac. So cool to watch. Just an added sort of example of what McLaren are trying to go for with this car, just making it more emotive and more sort of enjoyable as well as being savagely quick around the track. But that was really cool to watch. I'm going to do the loud start sequence, which means turning on the ignition, one press to power up, one press to engage ignition, and then I'm going to turn on the active panel before starting, and now give it a start. As you heard, what that does is it blips the engine significantly higher, much higher up the rev range, just over 5,000 RPM there, and sounds awesome on startup. Too much enjoyment, let's shut the car off. And we're into silence. What a sound for this 50S alongside it. So let's jump in 
and take it out. I am so, so pleased that I put my name down for one of these back at the end of last year because it's, it's really something. It's really something special. Just look at it. What a car. That was one of my favourite drives in a car in a while, in a long time. I'm, I'm very, very excited.